A man from Kidderminster says he's been forced to live in a van because of the effects of magnetic fields from things like mobiles, microwaves and Wi-Fi. Richard Kimberley has diagnosed himself with electro-hypersensitivity. He used to run a specialist computer and phone repair shop and says his life has been turned upside down after he moved in above it. Richard has been telling Andrew Easton how his everyday life has been affected. I can't go into a Wi-Fi area. Uh, which obviously these days is very hard to avoid. I can't be near a mobile phone mast. Again, very hard to avoid because they're everywhere. If I go into public places where there are people with phones, whether the phones are in use or in their pockets, it doesn't matter. I can't go anywhere near. You can hear more from this interview later in the show. Today, phone masts and the effect that they have on people, the possible effects that they may be having on you. We hear the story of a man from Kidderminster. He lives now in isolation. In the night, uh, to make sure he gets the proper sleep and to make sure he feels okay, he drives him to the middle of the countryside. He's got a van that is uh, kind of reinforced with stuff that means the phone signal can't get in. We hear his story after five o'clock tonight. Worcester, we talked today about phone masts and what well, a potential damage that they might do. Have a listen to this. If you missed it earlier this morning, here's a snippet of where this story started. And then after five, we've got a guy from Kidderminster who now lives in a van because because his, the effect of, of mobile phone mast radiation has been such to him that he, he now can't go near this stuff because it makes him very, very poorly. Uh, mobiles, microwaves, laptops, Wi-Fi even, they all kick out magnetic fields. And a woman from South Herefordshire claims she developed severe skin rashes after staying near to a mobile phone mast. Her name is Diana Boughton. She's from Welsh Newton. And she says she's suffered with electrosensitivity for 15 years. It's a condition which is created when in regular contact with electricity waves. GPs have been unable to diagnose the problem. She's been explaining what's been going on to our reporter, Julie Tyler. And she says, well, she wants others to be aware of the dangers of radiation. Despite the fact that everything was basically in electrical shutdown, everything was switched off that might affect me, my symptoms actually got worse when I was there. I started getting flashing lights in my eyes, which I haven't had before, more severe tinnitus than normal, the ringing in my ears was terrible, couldn't sleep, I was tossing and turning all night. Something completely new, I started getting itchy skin. It wasn't a rash to start with, it was itchy skin. And, and if we look, you have some images here for us, um, which can be seen online. Some horrendous red welts across your body, which the rash has come out right across your chest and up your neck and on your shoulders you've got the the most awful scarred mess really yeah yeah it, it started as a rash and it spread very rapidly over a period of a few days and they actually became burn like lesions and uh, not so much blisters just as if i felt as though i'd had acid thrown at me or i'd been in a fire it was absolute agony i put it down uh, to electrosensitivity but it was also site specific in the sense that I had stayed at home sometimes and on those occasions I didn't feel itchy so there was something there and what was that something after a month and uh, I spotted a mobile phone mast approximately two or three hundred yards away from the house the only thing in that area um, in, that emits microwave radiation then I'm confident that that's what's caused the rash and I've since discovered that this is actually quite typical these other people have seen my photos and they say they're typical of rashes and lesions that they've seen in other areas around masts obviously you were being treated by your GP at this time yeah well, what was their reaction to this what was their diagnosis well, when I first saw the GP, he thought it might be Stevens Johnson's, but that same day, lesions started to appear in my mouth and my throat, so I went to A&E. Um, they didn't give a diagnosis, they just gave me some strong antihistamines, which were effective, and the itchiness and some of the pain from the rash started to go. I tentatively asked, could it be radiation burns from non-ionising radiation from a phone mast, and they said, we don't know, we've never seen that before. All the symptoms are classic symptoms. Let's look at your reasons for going public at this stage then, Diana. Recently, David Cameron has said that he'd like to relax the planning laws to allow masts to be put up anywhere. Well, my concerns are not only for people such as myself, but for the general population. There are thousands and thousands of research papers showing that this type of radiation, as from phone mass, does cause health, major serious health risks. 
Diana Boughton from Welsh Newton calling for stricter laws to be imposed where mobile phone masts are placed. Uh, some pretty gory images, actually. They're on her Facebook page. Uh, that will show what happened to her skin. And after five in, what, let's say 20 minutes' time, we speak to Richard. He's from Kidderminster, and he now lives in a van which has been radio wave-proofed because it has affected his life so much that uh, he can't go near the stuff or it makes him really poorly. Hear his story on the show in about 20 minutes' time. A man from Kidderminster has been telling BBC Hereford and Worcester that magnetic fields have led to him isolating himself in a van. Richard Kimberley is self-diagnosed with electro-hypersensitivity. He says it's set off by things like microwaves, mobile phones and computers, or anything with Wi-Fi. He's been telling Andrew Easton what it's like for him living with the condition. I can't live in my home anymore because it just isn't possible and I have to basically drive off into the middle of nowhere each night when I'm, when I'm in England and park up in the middle of a woods or anywhere that there isn't mobile coverage or, and there's no people around. You can hear more from Andrew Easton's interview with Richard after this news bulletin. A man from Kidderminster who's living in isolation says the amount of people diagnosed with electro-hypersensitivity is just going to get higher. Do you not know what this is? Nor did I until today. Mobiles, microwaves, laptops, Wi-Fi, they all kick out magnetic fields, which can lead to this condition. EHS, we'll call it from now on. Richard Kimberley from Kidderminster used to run a specialist computer and phone repair shop. He says his life has been turned upside down after he moved in above the shop and started to get ill. He's since diagnosed himself with the illness. Now, many people have got in touch today following the story this morning that kind of started this with Diana from South Herefordshire, who claims she developed a severe skin rash after staying near to a mobile phone mast. It's something that is clearly having an effect on some people. I've been talking to Richard to find out how EHS has affected his life. Every night I'd wake up five or six times in the night, um, and that would be a good night. I would get up in the mornings feeling as if I hadn't been to bed at all, um, even, if I, even after a very early night. My joints uh, ached very badly, eventually to the point where I struggled to get down the stairs each morning. I found I couldn't concentrate on my work. My memory was awful. My head was always in some sort of brain fog. It was, um, it was extremely unpleasant. What did you think it was? I had no idea to start off with. The clues that led up to me diagnosing EHS, um, if, I, if, if I used my mobile phone, I'd feel like I was going to faint. Talk to us what EHS means, just so we're, we're up with the jargon. OK. Um, EHS is, um, stands for electro-hypersensitivity, and it's a condition where certain individuals become sensitive to electronics, uh, microwave radiation, and that, that sort of... Uh, equipment. Um, EHS is, is self-diagnosed normally uh, due to lack of appropriate awareness and training of the current medical doctors and full reversal of the condition is unlikely. So how does it affect you on a daily basis then? On a daily basis I can't go into a Wi-Fi area uh, which obviously these days is very hard to avoid. I can't be near a mobile phone mast. Again very hard to avoid because they're everywhere. If I go into public places where there are people with phones, whether the phones are in use or in their pockets, it doesn't matter. I can't go anywhere near. So um, I'm basically I'm forced to live in extreme isolation and poor health, uh, unable to access public amenities. So how are you living and where are you? Right, OK. Um, I... Well, once I, once I died, I died my, no, myself, I moved into a caravan in the middle of a field and started converting my Luton van into a RF-shielded motorhome. So that basically blocks all wireless signals that, that, that are outside. So it's turned your life around. So absolutely. I've had to walk away from my business um, after 20 years of, of working uh, day and night at it. I, I still own the business, but it, it has to be run by staff now. I can't live in my home anymore because it's just, it just isn't possible. And I have to basically drive off into the middle of nowhere each night when I'm, when I'm in England um, and park up in the middle of a woods or anywhere that, that there isn't mobile coverage or, and there's no people around. And the, the condition, again, explain to us, is it a recognised condition? It is recognised, yes. Um, there are medical doctors... 
um, that do recognise it, but in this country it is less recognised. In, in several countries report around 4 to 10 percent of people actually suffer from EHS. Um, in the UK this corresponds to approximately 2.5 to 6.3 million, which is actually more than the number of people in wheelchairs. And, and as far as the future goes... Uh, the the world is full of Wi-Fi. The world is overwhelmed with Bluetooth and mobile phone signals and other kind of radio waves. How on earth do you continue to live your life? As uh, you outlined, you, you're not going to get better. No, with extreme, with extreme difficulty. Um, and the problem is the guidelines uh, that were devised back in 1998 that are still in use um, as regards the safe limit for exposure weren't designed for this purpose. They, they, protect, they, they protect the tissue heating damage but not the radiation effects. So the radiation from micro from microwave sources is only going to get worse and how I carry how I live I don't know I'm I'm going by day to day it is extremely difficult Do the rules need to be rewritten They certainly do um there are many many studies that have been done and proven uh that EHS is a very serious problem I dread to think if we were having this conversation in in 10 or 20 years' time, I think the conversation would be extremely different. Why? More people being diagnosed? What, what do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the, the number of people that have been... Uh, that, are, that are diagnosed with it at the moment is, is one thing, but the number of people who do suffer effects of EHS and they don't realise that, that's, that this is what it's linked to. There's Richard Kimberley from Kidderminster, who effectively lives in isolation after being diagnosed with electro-hypersensitivity. Is this something that you've heard of? Is this something that has affected you? The radio waves, the magnetic fields that are kicked out by phone masts, mobile phones, Wi-Fi, laptops, that kind of stuff, has had an effect on you and your life. Do call us and let us know. Thanks for emails tonight. Here's Joan who says, Andrew, oh, this is the uh, the electro, now hang on, it's called electro hypersensitivity. We, we talked tonight about phone masks and, and the effect they're having on people. I heard from a woman who, who claims she's burnt by these masks and another guy from Kidderminster who's been so affected by all this, uh, these magnetic uh, kind of waves in the air that he, he now lives in isolation in a van. Uh, my sister, here's Joan, my sister and I have been saying this for many years, but no one seems to take any notice because they can't do without their electro electronic gadgetry. I believe that eventually it will be found that it has a bearing on throat and head cancer. Look at the increased incidences of children with cancer these days. Weigh up the number of them glued to phones and tablets. It's frightening. If suddenly the internet should stop, the whole world would stop because very few people could work things out in their heads any longer. Joan, thank you. If the internet stopped, we would keep going. So that's surely got to be a good thing. A man from Kidderminster has told this programme about how he's had to isolate himself in a van because of his sensitivity to the magnetic waves from electronic devices. Richard Kimberley says his electro-hypersensitivity developed after moving in above the computer and phone repair business he's owned for 20 years. He's told the Andrew Easton show the condition is self-diagnosed because it's not yet understood in the medical community. Uh, back to phone masks tonight. It's a really interesting story. And this started with a woman from South Herefordshire who claims she's developed a severe skin rash after staying near to a mobile phone mast. She wants stricter laws imposed on where they can be placed. Diana Boughton from Welsh Newton has suffered with electrosensitivity for 15 years. It's a condition which is created when in regular contact with electromagnetic waves. After staying regularly with a friend who lives next to a mast in Tlang Grove, she developed serious skin lesions. She claims that sufferers are being made to feel like freaks as the effects of microwaves are not being recognised. The World Health Organisation have for years on their website that it doesn't exist or that it does exist but it must be psychological. They're saying that it doesn't cause cancer. Every time I've said anything about this to a doctor of any type, they raise their eyebrows and they just say, I'm sorry, I've never heard of that or I don't know anything about that. The NHS state on their website that no evidence has been found to suggest some people suffer unpleasant symptoms caused by exposure to signals from mobile phones or masts. Do you agree? Do you disagree, maybe? Richard Kimberley is from Kidderminster. He is electrosensitive. I asked him how it affects his life. On a daily basis, I can't go into a Wi-Fi area, uh, which obviously these days is very hard to avoid. I can't be near a mobile phone mast. Again, very hard to avoid because they're everywhere. 
if I go into public places where there are people with phones, whether the phones are in use or in their pockets, it doesn't matter. I can't go anywhere near. So um, I'm basically, I'm forced to live in extreme isolation and poor health, uh, unable to access public amenities. This is uh, quite incredible to listen to. Peter Game works with the charity Electrosensitivity UK. Hi, Peter. Oh, hi, Andrew. How big a problem is this then? Oh, it's absolutely massive, actually. And um, I don't actually work for the charity Electrosensitivity UK. I am just a supporter of them, oh. and um, which I do on a voluntary basis. And um, you know, I give talks to various groups. I've organised a conference uh, on the subject myself. Good. Um, okay. Well, I, I did say you work with them. You did not not work for them. Um, yeah. But but the po- the point here is that is is the is it a condition electrosensitivity? What is it? Because the NHS say there's no evidence to be found uh, found that this this kind of occurs. So so what is going on? Do you think? <laughs> Sorry, but um, I do find um, that that quite laughable actually. Um, electrosensitivity is in fact a functional impairment uh, which is caused by environmental uh, pollution. In this case it, it is the um, microwave uh, or the radio frequency microwave radiation um, mainly from the uh, wireless uh, devices to which um, we're being exposed now. And, and there is evidence, who, who has, who has um, found the evidence here? That's the, that's the key thing. Is it anecdotal or is there some some science behind it? No, there's plenty of science behind it. Um, A lot of it comes from countries like um, Russia, where where they've... um, I think it's fair to say that they pioneered the development of um, microwave uh, weapons which have been used in warfare since the early 50s. And we all know how they uh, bombarded the... uh, American embassy uh, for donkey's years. Yeah, know, but we're which, talking about people now in, in a normal home in, in Kidderminster yeah. uh, being affected by their Wi-Fi. We're I mean, not talking yeah. about Russia and their, and their, their war tactics. I mean, th- this is um, something which sounds, if if true, quite worrying and, and, and a problem because of the amount of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and phone masts and things. It, it could even uh, become a greater problem the, the, as, as we increase ourselves to, uh, to, these, to these waves. Yes, it could indeed. I, I completely agree with that. And um, I say, um, there is so much science about this now that, um, and very, very sound science um, to which um, uh, independent research um, has found it to be extremely strong. So, and, and the charity that you're working with and that you're part, part of, what are they trying to do? Uh, first of all, they, they, um, their main aim is to help those who are sensitive um, and that can largely be through just sort of talking to somebody who understands um, what they're talking about and so often um, yeah, I get calls from people um, who've been put in my direction from various sources and there are times when they just break down into tears it's, it's the um, gratitude for, for actually being able to talk to somebody who is not dismissing uh, what they say. Okay, interesting. Are you electrosensitive yourself? Um, moderately, yep. It, it, um, do you want to know how it started? Well, I just want, I, I'm, you know, I'm more of interested in how it affects you on a daily basis. Okay. Um, if I'm in, say, a Wi-Fi environment for a period of time or... Um, Say so, so with an airport, uh, for instance, um, I get very fatigued, um, and this can affect me for several days afterwards. Um, I cannot use, say, a mobile phone or a cordless phone for any length of time at all um, because of the effect it has on my... Um, this, it's a pain that I get in my head um, from it, and this is where, with me, it first started. I knew nothing about the condition at the time. Okay. And um, this is one of the main symptoms uh, which so many people report to me. It's interesting and has provoked a lot of discussion tonight. Thank you, Peter Game, who works with the charity Electrosensitivity UK. Yeah, 546, we mentioned that. It's BBC Hereford and Worcester. Thank you for your emails today. This is uh, regarding our mobile phone story. Uh, Amanda says, this is, uh, as we've talked today, a lot about electro-hypersensitivity and People who are diagnosed with this, the kind of lifestyle that they are are leading. Uh, Dear team, 
I'm near Malvern now, and I left a house, career and family over 100 miles away to escape the effects of a mast under 200 metres from my home. I relate to what Richard says. This was Richard after five who now lives in isolation in a van. I've spent nights in a car and on the floor of friends to be away <clears throat> excuse me, from the higher radiation before spending months trying to find other accommodation I could tolerate. At one point, I considered taking up the offer of an old caravan to live in. Where you are, when you're in that much pain, you go anywhere so long as there's no Wi-Fi. This is something which is kind of new to a few of us this afternoon, and, and we're really interested to hear your stories and, and hear about the research too that has been uh, done to to just show the effect that that this radiation can have on one's body. We have talked tonight about a lot of things, including our main story, phone mask. Man from Kidderminster living in isolation says the amount of people diagnosed with electro-hypersensitivity is going to get higher. Is this something that's affected you? Uh, Wayne says, it's pretty obvious in my opinion, wireless technology has adverse effects. We use microwaves to cook food. Uh, tech is just a different frequency. Uh, wireless tech sorry, is just a different frequency at lower strength. The problem is like anything. Uh, it's har anything harmful, it will be difficult to, to measure. It depends on the tolerance of the individual, the amount of exposure. Whatever the scientific evidence, it's obvious why no one will admit that it is harmful, because once that happens, there'll be millions of people out to claim damages in court. A man from Kidderminster has been telling BBC Hereford and Worcester that magnetic fields have led to him isolating himself in a van. Richard Kimberley is self-diagnosed with electro-hypersensitivity. He says it's set off by things like microwaves, mobile phones and computers or anything with Wi-Fi. He's been telling Andrew Easton what it's like for him living with the condition. I can't live in my home anymore because it just isn't possible and I have to basically drive off into the middle of nowhere each night when I'm, when I'm in England and park up in the middle of a woods or anywhere that there isn't mobile coverage or, and there's no people around. He also says the condition isn't diagnosed because it's yet to be recognised by the medical community.